Hello, church. May God bless you today. Today we're studying out of Psalm 71, and we don't really know who the author is of Psalm 71, but uh, some think it's David, and it sounds much like David, uh, but we nevertheless are not sure. This uh, by Charles Spurgeon is called The Prayer of the Age Believer, and I can relate to this psalm about as much as any of them in, in the Bible. Um, and this gives us reason to think that the author of Psalm 71 made study and meditation God's Word a priority in his life. And we see that. He starts out in verse 1. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Now the psalmist begins his prayer with a declaration of his faith, his trust in God. Now, which is the soul in affliction what an anchor is to a ship in distress. So that's his foundation. That's where he starts. And he says in verse three, be my strong refuge to which I may resort continuously. And then in verse five is very interesting. It says, for you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. So it appears that from the psalmist from his birth, from his youth, he has trusted in the Lord up until this time period he's talking about it. He's writing you know, this psalm. Now, I can relate to that. When I was five years old, my uh, grandmother died. I just turned five. And I remember that day very well. It was a very sad day for me because I used to sit in her lap. She'd read the Bible to me. And I don't remember a time that I didn't trust in the Lord. And it was because of my grandmother. And from that youth on, I have trusted in the Lord. Oh, there's been times that have been weak times in my life, but always, I've always trusted in the Lord. And so he says in verse 9 here, Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. And we know during our life, there's many changes in life when we uh, go off to college or when we leave the house, go to another city or a job that may take us away from our family and uh, we're on our own. And sometimes it is very tempting to get away from God's uh, word. And then you're in old age, uh, after you retire and you, well, uh, the phone doesn't ring anymore. No one's there calling. Uh, people don't need your services anymore. That's uh, kind of what happened to me. And in some ways, that's a good thing. In other ways, you wonder, well, what's next? So there's change there that we have as we get older and uh, we need um, to continue to work in the Lord. And verse 14 says, but I will hope continue. I will praise you yet more and more. And then 17, oh God, you have taught me from my youth and to this day I declare wondrous works. And then verse 18 said, Now also when I am old and gray-headed, yep, that's me. Oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. And let me just say, may the Lord bless you. And uh, if you've got grandkids or uh, children that you need to lead to the Lord, Pray about it and stay after it and witness to them because God's got a plan. My grandmother was the plan for me. Now, if she hadn't done that, maybe the Lord would have provided a, someone else along the way, but I don't have to worry about it. I'm here today because of a precious grandmother who cared about my soul. May God bless you today. And may you enjoy and be encouraged by the reading of his word.